to be on uh, the Reconstructing Italians in Chicago, which as you can see is now a book. Uh, but uh, a, a possible contributor to uh, uh, the, uh, the anthology, uh, who we didn't catch quick enough, um, is Frank Cicero. Uh, Frank uh, has just completed a, a book on uh, at, Italian Protestants in Chicago, uh, his family among them, uh, which is called Relative Strangers. And uh, to start off our session on this book, we'll, uh, uh, we'll call on Frank to give us a, a short presentation on uh, uh, Relative Strangers. Thanks, Dominic. I'm going to stand up if you Please, don't mind. Please, yeah. I spent my career as a trial lawyer, and I'm used to standing up and saying, yes, sir, no, sir, and so on when not. Uh, I object. <laughs> Objections overruled. That's the first thing you have to look. I'll get up here so I'm not in the spotlight. Uh, the book, as Dominic said, is entitled Relative Strangers, and it's a book I never intended to write, although every trial lawyer intends to write a book. Every trial lawyer thinks that his war stories are really interesting and uh, if he publishes them, now he thinks he's going to be another Scott Turow who didn't write about his own war stories, but uh, uh, that's not true. But I embarked on a journey just a few years ago after being raised as an American. I knew nothing about where my family really came from or what they really were, except that I was a Protestant with four Italian grandparents. And uh, my four Italian grandparents came from two different parts of Sicily. On the one side, they were Protestants from the uh, far north, from Piedmont, right against the French border, southwest uh, of Turin. And on the other side, they were Sicilian Catholics. Growing up, there were huge differences between the two sides of the family and, uh, uh, in, a, in a variety of different ways. Cultural differences were one of them. Uh, for example, in celebrations and so on. And I'd like to just read a little bit from the book, uh, which uh, sort of outlines what I experienced as a kid. This is from the prologue, which is entitled, Are All These People Really Italian? Uh, on Christmas Eve, we walked down the block, and we walked the block down the street to Uncle Benny's house in the dark and cold. We were loaded down with pans of food and shopping bags full of gifts. Christmas Eve celebrations with my father's side of the family were always at Uncle Benny's house. My father and his older half-brother had made a big move in the 1930s from the old Italian neighborhood at the edge of downtown Chicago. They shifted as far west in the city as they could, buying vacant lots on adjacent prairie-covered blocks on Neva Avenue, the last street in from the city limits. Their two houses were identical, built at the same time from the same plans, except that Uncle Benny's house on the opposite side of the street was flipped so that the porch would be on the sunny south side of the street of the house, just like ours. When we entered the front door, the house was already crowded. I think my mother delayed our arrival as long as she could. The house was always hot, the windows steamed and dripping, the fire in the fireplace was blazing, the Christmas tree in the living room was lighted with large candle-shaped colored lights and surrounded by brightly wrapped packages, and the card game was in full swing on the, on the dining room table. All the uncles and older cousins were in the game, the table was covered with poker chips, platters of antipasti, beer and wine bottles, glasses, and rapidly filling ashtrays, the room cloudy with smoke. And there was noise. The card game proceeded with loud, raucous laughter, shouts of triumph, or wails of outrage, and loud accusations of fraud. The play of the younger cousins usually involved running all over the house, down to the basement, up to the second floor, through the kitchen where we were chased out by the ants. Play was loud when it was happy, and even louder when it was rancorous, and it always ended in crying. We were fed in the kitchen while the ants set the tables for the dinner, and then brought into the bedrooms to go to sleep three and four crosswise on the bed while the adults had their dinner and while Santa came. And then we were awakened later on when dinner was over to file out sleepily through the bright dining room where the table was now covered with dishes and being cleared and so on, into the living room to see what Santa had brought while the adults packed the cars and uh, headed home. Uh, gift opening was subdued by our sleepiness. Eventually, uh, we bundled up and walked the block back home in the dark and cold, loaded down with leftover food and shopping bags full of gifts. 
Christmas Day was spent at my mother's family in the house on Narragansett Avenue in which my mother and her three younger siblings had lived a good part of their lives. When we arrived, usually well before noon, the house was quiet, the air was fresh, the dining room table was neatly and fully set with its lace edged tablecloth and my grandparents' Sunday best dishes and glasses. No one would have dared smoke. There was no wine or beer and certainly never any card playing. We opened presents around the tree, the cousins, many fewer in number, ran around the house and up and down the narrow stairway, but we knew we should not make noise. Grandfather took the lead in the, in the uh, Christmas religious observances. There was always prayer. Before the midday Christmas dinner, we listened to the reading of the familiar Christmas story from the New Testament. We sang hymns and carols and we prayed. We all ate Christmas dinner together after praying again to bless the meal and those who had prepared it. After dinner, while grandma and the aunts cleared the table, did the dishes and cleaned the kitchen, the cousins played, but we were always quiet and respectful. The party ended early with more prayer after supper, of course, was leftovers from uh, dinner with a few additional jello salads and so on. And then, uh, and then the evening ended early because the men either had to be at work the next morning or if Christmas was on the, on, uh, the 25th, they had to be at church the next morning early. Wedding celebrations were similar. On my father's side of the family, the uh, Sicilian Catholic side, they were usually in an uh, upstairs uh, party room over a bar or tavern. They were raucous, they started early, went late. We came late and left early because that was what my mother preferred. And uh, they were great parties. Uh, most of my, all of my father's uh, uh, siblings and his half brothers and half sisters, because both his parents had previously been married and widowed, uh, married Catholics. Most were, they, they seemed to marry either Italians or Poles, and it resulted in, in grand wedding celebrations. Uh, on my mother's side of the family, the weddings were in church. Uh, they started early, they were a quiet service. Afterward, there was uh, uh, a reception in the church parlors, usually with fruit punch, uh, dinner, and uh, uh, cake, and so on, but never, of course, any wine or anything like that. <coughs> 